Her mom said to me, do you have something to tell me? She held the jar I had not so thoughtfully hidden on top of the back of the toilet. We shared the bedroom and the bathroom, but she slept in the living room. We learned to navigate small spaces. She held the jar in front of her like it was an ancient, history-changing archaeological artifact, dangerous and precious and fragile. She said, usually when someone has a jar on the toilet, it means they're taking a urine sample for a pregnancy test. <laughs> I was trapped. I sunk to the floor and said, Mom, I'm going to hell. Instead of the usual lambasting of my character because I'd gained a couple of pounds again, or because I neglected commas on a regular basis, or because I wasn't a Midwesterner, she embraced me. We sat on the floor and cried. Then she rolled out a series of secrets that she told me to keep forever. She said that we were both hell-bound. I felt much better. <laughs> that moment was the beginning of confessions between us. We confessed in church on a weekly basis and confessed in our prayers as often as needed. Confession wasn't new to us, but truth in confession, that was new. <laughs> I told her that I didn't use birth control because I didn't want to keep sinning and that I never planned to sin, but it kept happening, so I needed birth control. <laughs> and she confessed to me that at heart, she was a Democrat. <laughs> My mom, brother, and I lived in a trailer off the highway with a long driveway and a drafty barn where we hung the deer that we'd hunted. We attended a tiny white church with a few remaining stained glass windows left over from the narrow gauge train days. We lived in an 800 soul town between Durango and Cortez. It was a church town. Baptists, Methodists, Seventh-day Adventists, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Episcopalians, and Mormons. Mom took my brother and I out into the high desert looking for ancient abandoned treasures. We walked in the sage and pinyon and juniper hills and climbed into small sandstone canyons and up into 14,000 foot mountains seeking answers and stories. When she picked up a pot shard, she told me that the hunter-gatherer food supply was 80% gathered by women. So, she said, if you're in charge of the food source, you are in charge. She said, you can have kids without getting married. And if you get pregnant, don't get married, because then you're making two mistakes instead of one. <laughs> She also talked about some girls in town and said they had hinges on their heels. She said, if you act like them, I'll disown you. And she said, but I don't have to worry about you because you're a good girl. Mom raised me to beware my reputation because it was all that a woman in a small town had. So I took those mixed messages through the teen years and just like my single mother, struggled through it. There were reasons that we kept secrets and had a complicated relationship with morality and truth. That town was one of those trucks with gun racks. Hunter safety was taught in school, but birth control options were not. Everybody believed in Jesus in some incarnation or kept their mouths shut kind of town. Mom's Midwestern roots with that salt of the earth reputation to uphold and her status as a divorced woman, when only women on the coastlines were doing it, threatened to create a bit of a tear in the social fabric. All that was before the jar on the back of the toilet and before we started talking about reality in terms of actual events and feelings rather than through political or religious agendas. I became adept at finding the right place and time for speaking difficult truths, but Mom struggled. She'd had more practice over the year at keeping secrets, creating an intricate web of life stories. Her confessions bubbled up and over. 
She told me about old boyfriends, the ones I'd known, the rancher, the gun shop owner, and about others I hadn't known, the ones before my little brother and I. We talked about painful things, too. She said that her long-term logger boyfriend, Vern, who took her two-stepping on Saturday nights, never took her to any of his Seventh-day Adventist shindigs. He was ashamed of her. One day she said, you know, I was pregnant with you before I got married. I didn't know. We were shopping when she said this. I kept pushing shirts around on the rack, looking at them, looking at her. She told me that I had been in an accident and that in those days abortion was illegal. I said, think about how different your life would have been. We talked about that for days and I never once took it personally the way one might think. I kept that jar beside my bed. Thank you.